from a previous video that I made, there seems to be a lot of interest in how to make a motor mount for your trolling motor to put on your canoe. You know, paddling's all nice and whatnot, but when you're fishing, it's really nice to have the extra convenience of a uh, trolling motor. So this is my 17 and a half foot Boundary Waters cruiser model Cedar Strip canoe. And today I'm just gonna show you quickly how I decided to make my own mount. So I've got a one by six red oak board and a one by two. And those are the two pieces that I'm gonna use for the construction. So I've already gone up and measured a couple pieces of wood to quickly show you how I did it. First off, I wanted to find a good location. So behind my seat here, that's where I'm going to mount my trolling motor. So this board that I've already cut here, which I just lined up with the side of the canoe, which was about 15 degrees, I cut that so that it would go underneath at about the placement that I wanted to have my motor mount at. So this forms the bottom part of the brace of the mount. Now I've got another board here and this is the top board. I've already cut this one up too and measured it. So what you want to do with this board is measure from one side of the gunwale out over to where you want your trolling motor to sit. And this can be either left hand or right hand, but decide what side that uh, you'd like to have your trolling motor on. I hold my fishing rod in my right hand, so I wanted to put my trolling motor out on the left side so I control and uh, control my rod and the speed at the same time. So what you want to do is you want to get your top and bottom board section, which is going to provide your clamping force, um, set in place to mark your holes. What you want is you want the top to come about to the edge and then just let the other side free hang here. So then you're going to mark your holes which I've actually already pre-drilled here and start off with that. So after you've got your top holes drilled all I'm going to do here is put in one of my carriage bolts. I'm going to push in hard on it to mark the bottom board. I'm going to do the same with the other side. So that will give me a good lineup of where to drill my next hole. The carriage bolts that I'm using are quarter inch by three and a half to, to four inches. Just make sure that whatever length that you get, it's long enough to go through both pieces of the board. Now I've just put a couple of X's where I saw the marks from the carriage bolts after I pressed down hard. Um, kind of get them in the center there, but the, the main importance is your, your distance apart. Do yourself a little fa uh, favor and go up a drill bit from a quarter inch just to give yourself a little extra slop as the main strength comes from the compression and not from the side to side uh, orientation of the hole. If you're using a carriage bolt, you know how they've got a square section on them and that kind of needs to get countersunk into the wood before you can try to tighten it on the other side to prevent it from slipping. And what I do is I just lay it down, grab a hammer, and give it a good set. And that way, that square portion of the carriage bolt will sink right in, and then that will allow you to tighten up the nut much easier, or the wing nut, whatever you decide to use for your tightening. Now after you have the carriage bolt countersunk on the bottom there, why don't you go ahead and dry fit it onto the canoe. And then what I did is you can either use a wing nut or a regular nut, but I like tightening up when I'm out on the water just in case it feels like it's loosening up. I found these uh, wing nut type devices just at the local hardware store and they work quite well. So just uh, put down your washer and screw on this uh, wing nut here and dry fit it to see how it's shaping up. Next we're going to move on to making the actual platform that the trolling motor secures to. Now you need to figure out how much of a backboard you need. For this Minn Kota um, trolling motor that I have, I need two and a quarter inches from the bottom of the, the brace there to the bottom of the compression piece. And on top of that, I'll need to account for the width of that board, so an extra three quarters inch. And then for extra structural integrity, I'm going to put on these 45 wood blocks on the bottom, so I'll add another inch and a half to that. And then what I want to do is I want to be 
careful with the grain of the wood. I want to make sure that the grain of the wood is in this direction. Um, so perpendicular or parallel to my finger, but perpendicular to the top of the brace here. That way when it's flexing, putting pressure on it, it's not going to snap off this backboard. Um, so this will give it extra integrity. Now I've got uh, three pieces of wood cut here. As I was mentioning, uh, I've got one that I added up two and a quarter, three quarter inch and an inch and a half to give me four and a half inches. I then cut a second piece at two and a quarter and then those elbow pieces, those 45s, which were at an inch and a half. Now these will all combine to make our board that our trolling motor mounts on. So those two will be sandwiched together on top of that with the 45 added to the bottom for some extra strength. Alright, so I've made a little progress now. What I've done is I've taken the larger backboard and put the smaller two and a quarter inch one on top, glued it, put two screws through it. Now I've taken my mount here and I've laid it over. I already pre-drilled two of the holes earlier, but what you want to do is if you have a drill press, this would be nice because then you can get uh, exactly vertical. Otherwise, in my case, with a hand drill, you just have to be very careful and try to get it through the center. And now I'm going to use the top as a template for the bottom and go through both of them at the same time here. And what you're going to do is you're going to put carriage bolts through this to put your cross beam to your back uh, mounting plate here. And then we're going to cap it all off by putting on these little 45 degree elbows here for some extra strength at the end. I've got everything together, so I put through the carriage bolts and hammered them in. Uh, as you can see, I also pre-drilled and counterbored in the 45 degree angles to give it some extra strength. And so I'm all set now to put together permanently the boards here just with some washers and some nuts and then we'll get this tightened up and go try it out on the canoe so back at the canoe here I now have it installed looks like it's fitting quite well the wing nuts are tightened up and I've now mounted the trolling motor onto it here with the oak it's actually pretty sturdy not a whole lot of flex, it's moving the whole canoe here. And as you can see, we measured perfectly here so that we're flush here, flush here, and we still have enough room to tighten up the motor on to the mount fixture itself. So, looks like it went well. Now, check back in my other video and I'll show you how I power this. 